Congratulations from us here at Good Morning Football to you on that. Plus, the draft is coming up, and you have amazing stories to share with us. So congrats on everything going on. And how excited is everyone at uh, 360 about everything that we've accomplished or you've accomplished? Well, I mean, we're thrilled, obviously. But uh, congratulations to you guys as well for your Emmy nomination for Outstanding Studio Show. And to Nate, of course, for uh, analyst on CBS. It's so exciting. You guys do such great work. And we are so grateful to the four of you and to the entire staff and crew of Good Morning Football for what you do for NFL 360, because you're really our biggest cheerleaders in getting our, our stories and um, everything that we do out there. And I love watching your draft coverage. And so much of what we've heard so far is X's and O's and how players are going to fit into this team or that team or who might drop or go up. But uh, what we're able to do on NFL 360 is so exciting because we can tell the stories about these young prospects. And so I'm so excited tonight to uh, share the stories of three young men who not only could change the face of the NFL, but they're also changing the world. They're doing some pretty incredible, amazing things. So we're going to introduce you to them. Now, speaking of one of those stories, the first player you're introducing us to tonight is Quiddy Pay. He's a defensive mm -hmm. end from Michigan. He is considered one of the best, um, if not the best, edge rusher in this draft. But there's much more to him than just football talent. Tell us about him. Well, Nate, he has an incredible story that starts all the way over in West Africa in war-torn Liberia. And it was his mother's experience growing up that literally has shaped everything, his determination, his drive, everything and the man that he is today has stemmed from his mother's upbringing. And here's a clip. My mother grew up in Liberia when she was about 12 years old. A civil war broke out and her tribe was being hunted down. They would come in the middle of the night and they would light the houses on fire. Once you wake up, he would flee out the front door, and that's where a bunch of the rebel soldiers would be with the automatic rifles, and they would just kill everybody that would come out of the house. Everyone would scream, everyone was running around. She noticed that they torched her father's house. She couldn't even go see if he was alright because you had to leave or you would have been dead. She never saw her father again. After my father get killed, like, I keep dreaming about him over and over and over. So I said, if I have a son, I would name him Quiddy. I name him after my father. This is such a powerful story. I literally cried from start to finish um, watching it. So Quiddy's grandfather was killed in the Civil War. And after his mother fled the country, Quiddy was born in a refugee camp in Guinea. And as you heard her say, uh, she named him after her father. And the name has a special meaning in this culture. It means civilization. And it speaks to a cultural tradition where the kids left the villages, left the countryside, went to the city to get educated, and then came back. So it's really about um, uplifting your community. And it's it's a beautiful metaphor for what Quiddy is doing um, with his with all of the, everything he's able to do right now with children and 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 reaching out to the community and um they eventually made it to the united states of course but they dealt with uh, more poverty and hardship and gang violence um, living in the projects in rhode island and you'll see in the piece tonight you'll learn about a promise that quitty made to his mother when he was 12 years old and the sacrifices that they have made together uh to have a better life and it literally it it is is one of the best, if not the best, stories that we have told um, here on NFL 360. It looks like it. that was a stunning preview. I cannot wait to watch the entire piece. And the only way to follow that was is to bring up another name to champion, and that would be Nick Bolton, another young man whose family is at the heart and soul of all he does, the Mizzou linebacker, 2020 Butkus Award finalist. He was named to the prestigious SEC community service team for his impact on a wide range of issues. Now, people think of Nick as this hard-hitting player who plays with a lot of heart and passion, which he mm -hmm. does, but there's mm -hmm. a deeper story there. What are we in for there, Melissa? 
Well, right. So Nick is here in large part to two very inspirational, uh, courageous figures in his life, and that's his sister and his mother. And our colleague at NFL Network, Michael Robinson, brings us uh, this amazing story. He sits down with them and uh, talks to his sister, who really was like a second mother for Nick and also his sports hero. So here's a clip of that. Uh, explain to people the friendship you have with your sister Jasmine, man, because it seems pretty special. I kind of looked up to her from a very young age. She did real good at softball. She was also a real nice at basketball, too. Uh, my parents were out working and getting back a little later at night. She made it sure we ate after school. We had nap time. She controlled that. Uh, so just kind of just being a second mom, I watched her. Uh, she's one of the people I idolized growing up. How do you remember hearing of her diagnosis? Mm. We were trying to figure out, having all type of tests, trying to figure out what was going on with her. We found a three inch tumor in her brain, almost covering her brain. Um, just kind of felt kind of helpless. You know, I would just remember crying and praying and said, God, you know, whatever, no, I'll take whatever. Just just let her be alive. Let, let me see her. So Nick was nine years old when Jasmine was diagnosed with cancer. She was 10 years older. And again, she was this sports star, had college scholarships. And so it really, and also a mother figure. So it really rocked his world and, and was just kind of a game changer for him. Um, but she, uh, not only did she survive, but her resilience uh, inspires Nick to this day. But then in high school, um, another tragedy struck. His mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so it's every time you see Nick take the field and you'll see this in the piece tonight, he carries them with him. And it, it, they're so inspiring for him and what they've endured and their resilience. And I have to shout out to Michael Robinson because this piece was personal for him. His mother is also a breast cancer survivor. So he tells it in uh, such a beautiful, such a personal way and connects with them uh, to get this story out there. But um, we're excited for you to learn all about these, these amazing women in his life. That's amazing. Uh, continuing the show's theme of family behind accomplishments from these draft prospects, standouts from HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, have made this massive impact on the NFL over the last five decades. Mm -hmm. Guys like Walter Payton and Jerry Rice and Michael Strahan, Tariq Cohen now in the NFL, of course, Darius Leonard. You've got a story about another exciting HBCU prospect who also has a great family story. Tell us about him. Yeah, Peter. Uh, Franklin Mac McCain the third. He is a star cornerback at North Carolina A&T, but he is also the grandson of Franklin McCain, who was a pivotal figure, such an important figure in the civil rights movement. Uh, he was part of the Greensboro Four, which were four students at North Carolina a and who in 1960 sat down at a segregated counter in Greensboro at a Woolworth and asked to be served. And it got nationwide attention and became really a seminal moment in the civil rights movement. And so Mac uh, is very aware of the history and living up to his grandfather's legacy and following in that tradition. He also wants to accomplish what guys like Strahan and Rice did on the field, but it's really um, a great story of how he's honoring uh, the legacy and wants to continue to do so and realizes the importance of his grandfather. So um, these are the three stories that we're bringing you tonight. And it's all, it's such an important week, of course, for all of us um, and for all of these young men. And we're just thrilled 